Hey, it's Sophie from Zozo Thoughts. So this is a new segment called Love It or Hate It with Kristen Sales, Sales on Film. And this week we'll be discussing uh, Shane Carruth's Upstream Color. Yeah, uh, Upstream Color. God, all of these movies, I feel like they were movies that I didn't watch. Yeah. And then, and then people were like, you know what, you should really watch it. And I just like finally like an old grumpy old man was like, okay, I'll do it. Um, and this one, yeah, like, I was gonna see it in theaters, and then I was like, I didn't really like the trailer, it doesn't look like something I like. I actually watched it on Netflix, I think. Yeah, I did yeah. too, because I waited that whole time. Yeah. Well, because it went to Netflix, like, almost as soon as it was out of theaters, mm -hmm. which was really smart in terms of distribution, because it was getting really good word of mouth, but it wasn't distributed very widely. Yeah. Um, so just to bring it back, the one of the reasons I was like, having reservations about this movie is because I watched it, his first movie, Primer, um, which is actually available sort of online for free in a lot of different areas, um, like on Hulu and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I write a column where I highlight like movies that you can watch for free online, and Primer was one of them. So I watched it, and I just really, it just like really did not connect with me. Um, and so I was like, God, do I really want to see this, the Primer guy's new movie? But I did, and it just, I, I watched it on Netflix, and it, I was like a bad, I, I was like a bad cinephile. I like paused I it, yes. and like oh, revisited it, because it was, it, I just didn't, it wasn't working for me, so I was like, God, do I really have to watch this? I think it, just, it really is one of those films, because I, I'm pretty sure I paused it multiple times as well, because yeah. I was getting restless, but yeah, absolutely. it restless. was, it is one of those films where you really like love it or hate it. There's so many split uh, opinions about yeah, this absolutely. movie, especially it's actually here, the way it plays out and its contents. Yeah. And um, I loved the whole package, mm -hmm. but as I was going on through the, the film, I was so holding on like a string. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know where they're going with this, what's going on, what they're trying to like, what the whole message is. And of course, when everything came together at the end, it totally made so much sense. Um, it, it almost seemed like they took Water fragments of puzzle seen. pieces yeah. and they just tried to make this grand uh, gesture meaning and it's I guess true. I connected to last. that so strongly. Mm, but not while you were watching it, just like at the end? Yeah, the when, I, when I saw the whole piece together and I think that's... Mostly his films, uh, if you're just watching like ch chapters, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, they, you don't know what he's getting at, but when she, the whole thing is completed, and um, I guess it was more of the experience, the experience of watching it, yeah. kind of going through the emotions with the visuals and story and the characters, and then at the final scene, um, it, it just, there's this like epiphany. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, that's certainly the way it's constructed, and I have no doubt that that's the way that Shane Kerf sort of thinks about mm -hmm. his movies, and especially this one. To me, I, I don't like that impulse in a, in a director. Like, the, the metaphor I always think about is the puzzle piece, like you were saying. But it's sort of like, he has an idea for a movie, he thinks about it, you know, linearly, mm -hmm. he has a outline, and then he just takes samurai swords to it, you think, cuts, I, cuts it up, shreds it, puts it in a blender, uh, throws the pieces at the yeah. wall, and then films it. And then at the end, he's just like, well, look at this. And it's just like a magic trick. And he's I, like, this I, is what it means. And I, I just it, don't like that. I think it definitely could come off that way, but it seemed like it was so meticulously planned out because it's, it's certain moments where you just can't have a... You can't plan for something like that. You can't force someone to feel this huge uh, overcoming sensation of like love or mm -hmm. connection to the piece of art. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, you can't force people. It's just, I think that some people are more prone to, you know, have an emotional connection to a movie that is sort of made like this mm -hmm. and has sort of like a quote unquote, pro like a profound, meaning to it like life and death yeah. and philosophy and things like that and there are like more cynical people like myself who just see this as like you know really crass you know audience manipulation <laughs> and um it's uh, to me this movie is like really the epitome of a movie that like 
tries way too hard to say like the big thing yeah and just is a complete waste of my time really and i don't like to use this word pretentious but pretentious means like having pretensions that you know something that you don't actually know mm -hmm. and to me that's what this movie is like like he's trying he he's trying to say these things and like make profound statements about love and science and you yeah. know the connectedness of the universe but it seems very um just like hollow to me and he's using a lot of like stylistic tricks which are admittedly very well executed and he's a talented filmmaker yeah. i just don't like the films that he makes i think it's mostly an emotional uh, journey rather than how great um like it I think it comes down to your connection to the piece. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess the experience that I felt watching it, mm -hmm. uh, that I I really was like transcendent. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but I do see like it's it's a fine line. It is really, it's and such I mean, a I've, fine I've line. had those sort of transcendent experiences with. You know, I, I feel like the the director that sort of gets brought up in this conversation with Upstream Color is Terrence Malick. Um, because he sort of has a very very similar, you know, aesthetics and, and, and ideas about the connectivity of the universe. Like and, To the Wonder, love. I didn't like To the Wonder. Yeah, and yeah, and I think that To the Wonder, which is the same year, I think, was last mm -hmm. year, right? The To the Wonder and Upstream Color are kind of like two sides of the same coin. And it really is like a your mileage may vary kind of thing because it's you they're saying similar things especially about like it's a love story between two people both of those movies and I didn't love to the wonder but to me I believe Terrence Malick's sincerity and mm -hmm. in his filmmaking is just slightly more just able to sort of convince me a little bit more that the the you the the way that he is filming a movie and the sort of tricks and yeah. the, the voiceover narrative and things are coming from a place that are that he sort of believes and I just believe that that's the only way that he can tell that story. Yeah. Whereas in Upstream Color, I, I felt I felt very manipulated in terms of storytelling. I can I can see why, considering that he takes such gr grand ideas of evolution and us being connected to like nature and animals yeah. and like sort of like I, the L DNA elements yeah, and, yeah. I, I it's not it's not realistic it's not like any science it's not proven to be scientific or mm -hmm. even remotely real I guess um, him throwing pieces of things at the wall kind of somehow connected so well mm -hmm. uh, and the performances by Shane Kurth and Amy S Simons. Simons mm -hmm. were so convincingly done and I just felt her pain and just her struggle and yeah. their disconnect, their connect and um, just kind of human human nature with one another. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and all those things are, you know, legitimate and I just think it's uh, one of those things, I don't necessarily regret watching it. I mean, maybe while I was watching it, I was just kind of like, oh man, I made a mistake. But I just, <laughs> there are, um, and it, you know, this this is one of those things that I, I, th I think about now in sort of the internet age where you have video on demand and sometimes you can just pause and look at individual frames and take screen caps and sort of deconstruct a movie. To me, this movie actually ex plays better, you know, as maybe a group of screen caps mm -hmm. or as a f like a photo set or yeah, it's beautiful it's beautifully shot yeah so to me that is sort of the sort of like non-narrative aspect and just you know frame by frame to me that has sort of like more artistic integrity mm -hmm. than the actual like watching of the movie itself okay. which it, it has its own you know like uh merits but as a movie as a piece of cinema it just like doesn't work for me all right well, there you have it. I loved Upstream Color. Kristen didn't. Um, be sure to check out our next video, our final video uh, of the month of September next Wednesday. And be sure to follow Kristen. Yeah, salesonfilm.tumblr.com and at salesonfilm on Twitter. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye.